It's hard to believe that Microsoft, the company that still has the dominant market share in desktop operating systems and probably desktop software in general, has actually been around for 50 years now. That really does seem like an eternity in the tech sector and as a celebration of this success, Bill Gates actually decided to release the first piece of software that Microsoft ever wrote which at the time was really just Paul Allen and Bill Gates that made up Microsoft. Now, one thing that I have noticed is a lot of news outlets that are covering this source code release are calling this an operating system, which is not accurate. Sorry to say for everyone that likes playing with really old OSs, this is a basic interpreter and not an early version of MS-DOS. Also, the source code to the program was released as a PDF scan of printed paper, so this would have to be scanned back into its pure digital form before you can compile it, but it's a little under four kilobytes of assembly code, so this isn't gonna be an insurmountable task, especially with AI text scanning software. And like I said, this program is an interpreter. So it's kind of similar to the Python interpreter if you're familiar with that. But since this software was written in 1975, this interpreter was for BASIC, one of the first ever general purpose programming languages. So Bill and Paul got the idea to build this interpreter after they saw the January issue of that year's Popular Electronics magazine. And if we take a look at the cover here, it reads, world's first mini computer kit to rival commercial models, the Altair 8800. And then something about saving over $1,000 on some other stuff. And then there's, of course, other cool things mentioned in this magazine, like a $90 scientific calculator project. Oh my gosh, could you imagine? Think of the possibilities. Now everybody's going to be able to do these scientific calculations at home. But as you can probably tell by world's first mini computer kit, we're still years away from normal everyday people having a personal computer at home. But if you were a computer hobbyist with about $400 in 1975 money, then you could buy one of these and you could program it yourself. Now, the big problem that MITS, the company that designed the Altair, was facing is that they didn't have a programming language that everyday people could use to program this computer. All the Altair 8800 had was assembly, which is very difficult to program in. In fact, the whole point of programming languages is to just allow us humans to write short and simple code that makes sense to us, and then that goes through either a compiler or an interpreter, in this case, to produce the machine code that the computers can understand. And without this system of translating one language to another, you would have to write all of this crap here just to make something as simple as a tic-tac-toe game. And unless you leave really detailed comments in source code like this, there's no way that you or anyone else is gonna be able to look at this even a week from now and be able to debug it or just have any clue what the code is even doing because that's just how complicated assembly can get. Now, the reason that the Altair 8800 did not have a basic interpreter, despite the basic language already being 10 years old, is because this machine was using a processor from a new company called Intel. That's right, this machine had a single Intel 8080 processor clocked at two megahertz with a full 16-bit address bus that could access up to 64 whole kilobytes of memory. Wow, the possibilities were endless. It's like 64K is all we're ever gonna need. But nobody had written a basic interpreter for those Intel chips yet. And it was only proven just one year prior at an Illinois university that someone even could produce a basic language interpreter for the Intel 8008 microprocessor in a paper that was released with that same name. But that experiment was actually done on a mainframe computer, an IBM 360 
that was running software on it to simulate the Intel 8008 chip. The company's first ever 8-bit chip, by the way, and the predecessor to the 8080. So hopefully this gives you an idea of just how new all of this stuff was. So Bill Gates and Paul Allen reached out to MITS and they told the company that they actually had a basic interpreter that could run on the Altair 8800's Intel chip. So they're essentially telling this company that they have the key to make this mini computer kit become a useful appliance to the everyday person and not just something that a few nerds with 400 bucks to spare are gonna tinker around with in their spare time. So of course, Mitz wanted to try out this interpreter and they wanted to make a deal with Allen and Gates so that they could license the software and sell it alongside their mini computers. But at the time that Bill Gates and Paul Allen were actually talking to people at Mitz on the phone and making this deal, they didn't even have a basic interpreter that could run on their Altair computers. In fact, they didn't even have an Altair 8800 or any other kind of microcomputer to develop and test their software on. Bill Gates would have to do all of the programming and testing of this completely non-existent software that he was selling over the phone on a mainframe computer at Harvard that was running a simulation of the Intel processor. So that's where the two programmers got started, working day and night, and probably also reading the University of Illinois paper again and again that explained the design and implementation of a basic language interpreter that is restricted to the environment of the Intel 8008 microprocessor. Because why would you bother with reinventing the wheel if somebody has already gotten about 90% of that research figured out? But it's important to point out that Bill Gates didn't just copy the code from this experiment into his product and then boom, sell that and make millions, okay? This university application that was done a year prior still required 16K of memory in order to function. While an absolutely maxed out Altair 8800 that Bill Gates is targeting would only have 8K of memory on board it, and the standard models had something like 1K and 4K of memory respectively. So Bill and the gang had to figure out how they could solve this same problem of getting a basic interpreter running on the Intel 8-bit chip, but do it with half of the memory footprint of the University of Illinois within a couple of months. And they succeeded, although it pretty much came right down to the wire with them getting this software ready. And there were still some bugs in it that had to be worked out even after the demonstration to MIT's president, but the software was good enough for them to get their licensing deal, and that was the beginning of Microsoft. And now we can all see the source code that got this trillion dollar company started. And like I said at the start, it's assembly code that was printed off on paper and uploaded as a PDF but it is high resolution and it's high quality enough to actually read through it. And the code is very well documented. There are comments everywhere, as you would expect some assembly code to be, because otherwise nobody's going to know what the heck is going on years or even months later. This is a really cool piece of programming history, and I'll leave a link for you to view it yourself in the video's description. That's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my website based.when if you'd like to buy some of my awesome merch or accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% discount on all items at checkout when you pay with Monero XMR. Have a great rest of your day.